Hello everybody, it's Dieter back with another video. Alright guys, today's video is gonna be about Novak Djokovic. What can we say about Novak Djokovic? What can we say that has never been said in the past? I don't know if I can say anything new about this Serbinator, this machine, this predator, this terminator, this consistency beast. Man, he plays tennis like it is a PlayStation. He just has all the tools. He has all the qualities. He has the stamina. He has the consistency. He has the depth. He has the serve. He has the backhand. He has the forehand. And not to forget his returns. My dear God, how can you return as good as he does with such kind of a depth? It is just insane. And his ball striking, you see, he hits the ball so clean, with such depth, the ball lands on the feet. You know, guys, many people was hyping the Djokovic match against Diminaur, I'm not one of them, and somebody called me, but you are not, I, I think one of one, I got one comment said, all the experts are taking, I don't give a damn what experts tell me. I don't give a bloody damn what the experts tell me. It was not a beast mode, Djokovic, we saw against Diminaur. Divinar was a joke. Nine, uh, nine winners and 28 un unforced errors. He did 19 more unforced errors than winners. 19. But this match as Rublev is a different story. Now we saw a flawless Djokovic. Now we saw a beast mode level Djokovic. You know why? Because it was a completely different opponent he faced on the other side of the net. Rublev is a much stronger opponent than Diminaur. Rublev has a much better forehand than Diminaur. Rublev has a much better serve than Diminaur. Rublev, he smacks the ball. Rublev, he crushes the ball. Didn't matter. He faced a flawless Djokovic. Djokovic, who was taking the ball on the rise. Djokovic, who was kissing the baseline. Djokovic, who was hugging the baseline. Djokovic, who showed his entire repertoire. Djokovic, who just outclassed under Rublev, according to me, and gave him only seven games. Won the first set, gave, gave Rublev in the first set. Do you know what Djokovic said in the first set? You know, Andre Rublev, I am opening my oven. I am opening my oven. Are you in the mood to getting yourself a breadstick? I am giving you a breadstick. Please, Andre Rublev, try this once. I am opening my oven. Here you have it. Take the breadstick, 6-1, bang, go down to Chinatown. That's what Djokovic did in the first set. Then in the second, 6-2. It was not much better there, but at least it took one more game in the second set, Anna Rublev. Then in the third, it was Rublev's best, best set in the entire match. He took four games in the third, Djokovic won the third set, 6-4. So Djokovic wins the match. 6-1, 6-2, 6-4, with a clinical, with a flawless performance. Man, I don't know what to say. And if we have people out there, I just want to put one thing out there. Somebody was, perf was comparing Novak's performance against Diminaur with Novak's performance against Nadal four years ago in that 2019 Aslopon final. Are you nuts? Are you nuts? Djokovic did nine unforced errors only against, against uh, Rafael Nadal in that 2019 Aslopon final. And I believe he did 28 winners. He did 19 more winners than unforced errors. 19 more winners than unforced errors against Rafael Nadal in that Aslan Open final 2019 where he crushed Rafael Nadal and gave him more or less a beat down. That was a beast mode level Novak Djokovic. It was for sure not a beast mode level Novak Djokovic we saw against Diminar with 27 unforced errors and only 26 winners. He did one more unforced error than winner. Are you guys nuts? Do you think I care about what Tim Hangman or Mads Villander says on the Eurosport? Do you think I care about them? Do you think I really give a damn about their expertise? Some tennis analysis out there in the world, they just look at the score. 
I don't look over the score. I watch the matches. I follow the matches from the first ball to the last ball. It was not a beast mode level job that we saw against Dibinaur. It was a beast mode level job that we saw against Rafa Nadal four years ago in that 2019 Aslo Open final. It was beast mode, beast mode level we saw Djokovic against Rublev in this quarterfinal match. If not a beast mode level, for sure, close to beast mode level. Definitely a great mode level Djokovic we saw against Andrei Rublev in this quarterfinal. Djokovic, what can we say about him? He did 14 aces, 5 double faults. He lands 64% first serve sin. He wins 80% behind his first serve. He wins 50% behind his second serve. He does 32 winners, 21 on first terrace. He does 11 more winners than on first terrace. He wins 105 points in total in the match. Under Rublev, he did, I believe, 6 aces, 3 double faults. He lands 70% first serve sin, so he lands a little more first, first serve sin than, than Novak Djokovic. 70% first serve sin. He wins only 61% when his first serve. And the reason to that is Novak Djokovic unbelievable returning. Unbelievable returning. Uh, the ball was landing on his feet. On his feet. On, on Andrei Rublev's feet. Even when under Rublev, for Rublev to get a short ball or a short return, his spot serving was required to be on top. On top. He was just, he was forced in, he was forced in serving in the tee, out wide. His spot serving, he just was forced to find the spots. If he didn't find the spots, even in the first serves, the returns were coming with interest the returns were coming with depth with return were with the returns were, were, were coming sharp with re the return were coming fast and you could see under Rublev the guy was helpless he was doing that like this many times during uh, and was looking his, his team and was doing like this was doing like this what can I do yeah I understand him it is a helpless situation. That's what Djokovic does to his opponents. He makes them look helpless. Because Rublev, I might be, in my opinion, he didn't do a bad match. He was trying. He was hitting the ball hard. He was taking. He was trying to stay close to the baseline. He was trying to hit the ball as hard as he could because it is not easy hitting through Novak either. He's like an elastic gym. He's like a rubber. He's a rubber man. He's everywhere. You know. You know, guys. Against Novak. You need to hit one winner three, four times, if you're, my, if you're getting my point. One winner, you need to hit it three, four, sometimes even five times, because everything comes back. He's a, he is like a walking, running wall. Rublev doesn't have this kind of problems with other players. Against other players, he has such a huge forehand, he hits that forehand so hard, so one shot from his forehand, the point is over. He hits through majority of all the other opponents. Against Djokovic, he hits to hit one winner three, four, sometimes even five times. Because everything you he he throws at Djokovic, everything comes back. He he threw the entire kitchen sink towards Djokovic. Djokovic was throwing everything back. So Rublev, he, he was trying. He, like I said, he did. He lands sixty. He lands 70% first serve scene. He wins only 61% behind his first serve. He wins only 31% behind his second serve. Djokovic was crushing his second serves, which was not a, any, any surprise because Djokovic, he eats Andrei Rublev's second serve like breakfast. And that's why Andrei Rublev sometimes was going big on second serve because he was afraid of Novak's returns because Djokovic was eating those second serves like breakfast. And that's why Rublev won only 31% of the points being second serve. And Rublev actually creates five double, five break push opportunities, but he didn't convert any of them. You know why? Because Djokovic is clutch as well. Every single time Rublev had break points, Djokovic was coming with big serves, big forehands, big backhands, you name it. Djokovic is a clutch beast as well. So Rublev had five break push opportunities, couldn't convert in any of them. Rublev did 29 Amforsteros, 26 winners. So Rublev does six more Amforsteros than winners. I'm sorry, three more Amforsteros than winners, which is not that bad 
considering what kind of opponent, what kind of beast he was facing. And Rublev won 75 points the entire match. Djokovic wins 105 points the entire match. Djokovic wins 30 more points than Andrew Rublev the entire match. That is a lot in tennis, winning 30 more points than your, than your opponent. Djokovic, he had 14 break match opportunities and he converted in five of those opportunities. He, he broke Rublev's serve two times in the first set, two times in the second set, and one time in the third set. And Djokovic is through to his 10th Asil Open semifinal. And we know, we who have watched tennis for so many years, historically, when Djokovic is through to a semifinal in, at Asil Open, he usually have, he, no, not usually, he has always won the event. He has never lost an Asil Open semifinal or an Asil Open final, obviously. So Djokovic now is through to his 10th Astral Open semi-final and he will be really hard to defeat. It is not impossible, it is not, he's still human, but it will be exceptionally, murderously difficult beating this consistency machine, this consistency beast, this consistent terminator, this consistent predator. Novak Djokovic is definitely the man to beat. Not only now, he has been that since the tournament started. He has been that from the first day of the Astral Open started almost two weeks ago. Ten days ago the Astral Open started. So now Djokovic will face Tommy Paul in the semifinal. Tommy Paul and Djokovic will face each other for the first time ever. But we, are, we saw what happened when Djokovic faced another dude two days ago for the first time ever, Diminal. He crushed him in three sets. Tommy Paul will have his chances, but it will be a really, really Mount Everest mounting to climb for Tommy Paul. A Mount Everest mounting to climb too much, too big, and too difficult for Tommy Paul to topple in the end. That's what I feel, and I think that we will have the Aslobo final between Novak Djokovic and Stefan Tsitsipas on Sunday. Alright guys, I hope, you, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, see you next time. Peace!